men who have seen escorts. What was your experience like? Story one, it was okay. But I paid for the absolute cheapest. So 100 euros an hour in my area. Moment we finished, although I didn't, she said more women would be attracted to me if I lost some weight and got a haircut. Didn't actually cater to who I wanted, but well, the haircut I got the next day, but still working on the weight loss. That's amazing, you spent 100 euros to only get insulted at after. I mean, it's pretty cool she's looking out for this guy. Like, hey, she's probably trying to, like, imply, like, hey, you don't need to be doing this. You know, just go lose some weight. You'll be good. Story two. I'll give you my story, which isn't ideal, because let's face it, in an ideal world, I wouldn't need to go to one. But here we go. I'm in Australia, by the way, for context. In February 2021, I separated from my wife. I kind of threw myself into my job in order to focus on something else. I was and am living alone in a three-bedroom house. By the end of April, not only had it been the longest I've gone without sex in five years, but it had been the longest I've ever gone my entire life without a hug or a genuine infection. I was a shell of a person and was so in the heat and also so lonely. For a couple of weeks, I looked at my local brothels to see what the deal was. I have never paid for any form of sex work before and had no idea what to expect or the etiquette. One day after some work drinks in the city, I thought, F it, I'm gonna go. I went by myself. The entrance was hidden and the door from the streets leads into some neutral space that reminded me of a decontamination chamber or a jewelry store. One of those doors into the room, a plexiglass window where the receptionist was and another door leading to the venue with an electric lock. I had to pay $10 to enter the venue and I told the receptionist, who was very kind, that I was a first timer. I was nervous and shy, although I'm normally not that way in a social situation. And I had no clue what to do in terms of choosing a woman or payment. She said, don't worry, we'll take care of you. So they buzzed me in and immediately a very short, like four foot 10 inch tall Asian woman comes out to meet me. She says, I'll show you around and indicates the receptionist. I kid you not, at the moment the receptionist hits a button on what I can only describe as a school intercom system and she speaks in the mic which blares throughout the entire bottom floor. We have a new customer, all girls to the floor. Holy crap, I was effing mortified. I was hoping to slink in, speak to a woman and disappear, but no. So the Asian lady ushers me into a lounge room with couches and a pool table. There were two women already sitting there in lingerie. Then, five seconds later, ten or so women, all in sexy outfits, march out to meet me. Literally one by one from some back room. Not on purpose, but the corridor was narrow. It was a range of shapes and sizes. Blondes, brunettes, tall, short, thin, chubby, etc. The lady proceeds to introduce me by name to all the women who had fancy names of their own. I was so freaking nervous, I couldn't believe it. All these women were looking at me and asking, So, who do you like? What do you want? I looked at the range of sexy, solicitable women and said, I think I'm going to play pool, snooker, for a bit. So, I proceeded to play pool by myself for 30 minutes while I could gather my nerve. One strange thing I discovered was that in my state in Australia, brothels were prohibited from serving alcohol. I really could have used a drink, but given the tendency for alcohol to make people and thus clients violent and impulsive, it makes sense. Upon sinking the last ball, one of the women immediately said, Now that you're done, you have to speak to us. I nervously laughed and asked if a certain woman was available, using a work name. In reality, the second I saw her, I knew I wanted to be with her. She was my perfect type and sexy as hell. It just took me 30 minutes of pool to work up the courage. The other women, very politely and graciously, said she went into the other room and that I should ask the reception. I asked the receptionist and again she blared into the mic, Name, can you please come to the reception? She arrived with an enthusiastic smile and a giddy laugh. Introducing herself again, I asked about prices. Apparently, there's a standard service with only basic and intervals of 50 minutes. There's also a deluxe service, which is either 30 minutes or one hour, and each worker has a different thing included in their deluxe service. Hers was the girlfriend experience. Apparently, this means lots of kisses, tenderness, body kisses, and the like. It was exactly what I was looking for. I paid $380 for one hour of the deluxe service at the reception desk, and then the lady led me upstairs to where the rooms are. I stared at her amazing butt the whole way up. The floor slash building was arrayed exactly like a hotel. Before getting to the room, she stopped at a closet and took from fresh bed sheets. The room contained a double bed, a chair, and a desk slash table as well as a nice little bathroom corner with a shower in it, no toilet. She laid the sheets on the bed and explained that she needed to do a health check as the first thing. She was very nice and explained in detail how it all works. Knowing it was my first time, I lay on the bed while she inspected my junk for signs of SDIs and also my hands, feet, and lips for signs of drug use. After that, I got to have a nice warm shower to make myself as clean as possible. During the shower, got to chatting and me being a curious and friendly person, I asked her what working there was like, etc. She said she liked the job because she had some health issues, back stuff that made it really difficult for her to work a regular 9-to-5 job. This job allowed her to work. She said she mostly enjoyed it and most of the time the men are either fine or enjoyable. She did say, however, that she thought the OUS sex worker laws should be updated and improved. After my shower, I got in the bed and she asked if I'd like a massage to relax and I replied, 
replied that I'd just prefer to kiss her. She said, well, come kiss me then. After the first five seconds of kissing, I merely forgot where I was and that she's a sex worker. We did a bunch of great stuff, but for one hour to me, it seemed like we were just two people doing the intercourse. Since I was nervous and had been drinking at my work drinks, it took me a while to finish, despite the fact that this woman was possibly the hottest girl I've ever been with. After we finished, we lay there and cuddled for a while, talking about life and stuff. She was lovely and sweet and kind the whole way through. Although I'm sure that some of it was fake, it seemed implausible to me that she could fake 100% of her demeanor and opinions of her job, especially when we weren't having sex, only talking. At the one hour mark, a voice range out through the room speaker saying, name, it's been one hour, to which she responded, yes, we're all okay. I guess this is a safety measure to make sure no woman is hurt or worse during a session. We talked some more while I dressed and she hugged me and kissed me goodbye when I left the room. All in all, it was a pretty positive experience. No doubt this brothel was one of the better ones in my city. But the house laws and regulations for sex work seem to ensure a worker's safety and health, which is good. I came away with much more respect for the sex work profession as a whole. I got what I needed. Ideally, I want to pay for it and affection, but I was in a pretty desperate spot. Honestly, if I had the money while I'm single, I'd go back to her at least once a month. Well, that's a very fascinating story. I usually don't really get that into stories. Don't get me wrong, every story is pretty interesting, but this was very informative and completely just showed me that I don't understand how the sex work industry actually is in some countries. They have that stuff very professional. Like, I was not expecting them pull him in the bed and do SDI checks and drug checks and all that. And I would believe it. They probably do like their jobs. Like, think about it. They're probably being paid very well. And most of these men, if they're paying this amount of money, they're usually, they don't want to mess around. I always give people this example. If you go to a $10 gym per month and a $100 gym per month, usually you're going to find that people take better care of their equipment, are better people, are nicer, and more eager to help you at the $100 a month gym. Because if people are putting down money, usually they're not messing around, they're pretty serious about it. So with how much these ladies are making and the amount of money it costs to go to those services, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just insane how professional that was they definitely understand the game too because they really understood like even when it ended they kept it very like oh bye you know kiss and all that and they made the person feel very comfortable these are very smart business people they understand the value of a returning customer they want you to return story three years ago my girlfriend her friend and i went to denny's at like 3 a.m we were all pretty tossed there was an escort outside, pregnant and crying. We felt bad and invited her to breakfast. If I'm being honest, I don't remember the conversations we had while eating because I was mostly just stoked for the food. Anyway, she ended up paying for all our meals and tipped the server quite well. It was a super random experience. Denny's after 2am is a wild place. Yes, this is very true. I've had some of the craziest memories at Denny's. For anyone that doesn't know what Denny's is, it's a 24-7 diner. Basically, you go there to get effed up. Well, you go there after you get effed up. Story 4. I was in the Navy in San Diego. When you get to your specialist school, it's divided into A school and C school. Once you graduate from A school, you can leave the base relatively freely. I hadn't been with a woman since before boot camp. A few of us would go to Tijuana, which was quite against the rules, but we couldn't drink in the States, so we'd go to Mexico where we could drink freely. Tijuana was a special place. There weren't many women that weren't ladies of the night, and for quite some time I didn't pursue their services, until I did. I was alone. I was drunk. Like, very, very drunk. And this particularly beautiful lady approached me about her services. And I said, sure, why not? I've been working hard. Just as one time. What's to lose? The bar we were in had a hotel attached that you could rent by the half hour. We go to a room and I put my credit card down to secure the room. We get inside. She goes to the bathroom to freshen up. And I lie down. I fell asleep immediately. When I woke, she had stolen everything other than my military and state ID. The hotel room was around $200, as they let me sleep for 9 hours. I was also late for roll call back at base and missed half my first class. It was later revealed what I had done, and I was put on 90 day restriction, 90 days of extra duty, and 90 days of restricted pay. Definitely didn't enjoy my experience at all. All in all, it cost me about $3,000 to take a nap. Jeez, that is just awful. Not only did this man lose $3,000, he got screwed for the next 90 days. At least the lady was kind to not take his identity and try to steal that. There's always a positive, right guys? <laughs> Story 5. I paid $1,000 including liquor when I was in Greece, and I didn't get to cuddle. A goodnight kiss, as if I was kissing my mother. For clarification, I stayed downtown in a hotel in Athens, ordered their best bottle of champagne, which was a couple hundred dollars, and a six pack of Hiken. Afterwards, we sat around drinking and talking. That's the reason why I came to a grand. 
Jeez, this, this person got paid a thousand dollars to talk. That, that's the dream. Holy crap. Story six. One of my roommates was an escort. Tall, blonde, tattooed, gorgeous. She talked about needing to establish a lot of boundaries right away. List of don'ts. She talked about not kissing in the mouth or cuddling. She said it costs a thousand dollars and most men only last 50 minutes. She had a goal to save up and finish his career at 30, then transition to something else. She did a lot of stripping that started as dancing will eventually moved into sex. She said every bachelor party she's ever done, the husband has cheated on his wife. She seemed quite hardened and kept saying men are all the same. From the outside, it seemed like a scary job. Lots of encounters, lots of unknowns. Story 7. Oh man, I was 19 and my best friend at the time convinced me how fun it would be. Two dorky dudes in a college dorm talking about getting an escort. This is going to be a long one. Anyways, I still remember the person. I called up the number and talked to a woman and stated that I wanted to hang out for an hour. I went to the hotel and went into the room number that I was given and I met up with her in the hotel room. I remember going in and she asked me who I was and I told her I talked to her earlier. She asked me if I had the money. I then quickly realized this was a job to her, not something that was fun. I remember plopping down in the chair near the door while she was on the bed. In that moment, all the fantasies of what I had went right out the window. I thought she would want to be sexy and hop on me because I was young and handsome at the time. Well, all she did was smoke her cigarettes, sitting in the bed, rolling her eyes with an annoyed attitude, asking me what I wanted to do for the first 10 minutes. I remember in that moment feeling absolutely stupid to expect someone to want to feel attraction based on money spent towards me. After she kept her eyes on the clock for the first 10 minutes, I made a decision that since I'm here and I'm going to get the time I paid for with my money, that I was going to talk to her for the rest of the hour. I then told her that I didn't want to do anything sexual and that seeing her made me come to the realization that I was a fool for thinking someone doing this for work would find me attractive right off the bat. After I said that, she started to ask me if I worked for the cops over and over again and after a few minutes and a few cigarettes, actually asked me to pull out the battery of my phone and take off my clothes down to my underwear to see if I had any wires. I was a stupid kid and I should have walked off, but I decided to screw it and did what she asked. After I did that, she felt a huge sigh of relief and told me I could put my stuff back on. After I got my phone back together and dressed again, she ended up talking about her husband and how scary this work was. But since she didn't want to be a stripper and doesn't know anyone in peace, she has to do this stuff in order to pay the bills because she has a felony. She has such a sadness and started to tear up saying that she has seen so much violence and pain and she has no other skills in life and has been doing this for three years. But the money is too good. She ended up pulling out her flip phone and showing me pictures of her kids and her husband telling me how they met and that they were high school sweethearts. But both of them dropped out of high school because she got pregnant and fell into using meth. She told me that she loved her kids and would do anything to give them a great life. After her strolling me, her family, and opening up about how hard this life has been, right at an hour, her husband knocked at the door. She opened up and asked if she was okay. From the photos, they were at least a year older, but seeing her husband put the fear in me. He was tall, maybe like 6'5 or something, skinhead, covering head to toe in tattoos with a tank top on and some baggy jeans. He was buff, and in his right hand, he had what looked like a small .38 revolver at his side. He then stepped in and asked if I had the money. I pulled out the cash, which was $200, and handed it over to him. He put a cigarette in his mouth, still with a snub-nosed revolver in hand, then pulled out a lighter with his left hand and lit up the cigarette, taking a big puff before putting the gun down on the table and started counting the 20s, making sure the $200 were there. I remember looking over at the wife in fear and seeing her face. Her face gave off a look of, oh honey, you're so cute, with her smiling and rolling her eyes as her husband's counting 10 20s, holding them up against the light in the room with his cigarette in his mouth, squinting like a cashier checking for fakes. He then asked her if she did a good job, and she said yes. The guy then looked at me, checking from my head to toe, and said, My wife did a good job. Usually if someone does a good job, they expect a tip. I ended up panicking a little, but fortunately I prepared, and I took out an extra 100 just in case I did want to tip. So I handed up the 100, and he didn't bother to check at all. All he did was offer his hand out for me to shake, and said he was glad doing business with me. I timidly shook his hand, and after that he told me to get out. I quickly got up and stepped out of the hotel to hear the door behind me slam, rattling the window, and siding outside the hotel. I then took survey looking around and saw my car and my friend chilling out eating some Taco Bell in my car. I went down to my car and got in the passenger seat looking fearful and he asked me if I got my D sucked and if it was awesome. I just told him that was one of the scariest moments of my life and that I would never do it again. He ended up driving me back to the campus. He was laughing his butt off telling me he would have done this and that saying he would have beat the old dude's butt. After that we have never talked about it again. Oh well, that's a very crazy moment to have. God, the very interesting thing with these stories is it really just kind of shows the complexities in these industries. Like some of it are these like full-fledged businesses where they're doing drug tests, STI checks, STDs. They're making you feel great. It's all professional. They have fees at the receptionist. 
they have this where you just kind of go and they just, you know, they clearly hate their life and all that. To be fair, though, with this last story, it did sound like it was probably more like a business owned kind of thing. It was very disheartening to hear, though, that she can't really work. At that point, it just sounds like society was just completely failing her. Think about it. Society should have a system where you can still find work somehow. I guess you can make the argument that this person could work online or so, which actually that would be a good idea. You could take online calls from the house. You know, I feel like there is a lot of options. It's a little tricky. You can either say society has failed her or that there's a lot more work to do online and all that good stuff. Story 8. My first experience was not the greatest. She was very thick, which is why I like, and covered in tats. Got up to her hotel room, placed money on the table, she went over to count it, and immediately dropped her pants and took off her shirt. It was all very rushed. She even reminded me about the time mid-stroke. No moaning, nothing. Her attitude was pretty much, let's get this over with, so I can get to the next customer. She told me she travels and will be in my city again the following month if I wanted to reschedule. Safe to say I never called her back. Yeah, I do want to reiterate the point. I I, I get this is like escort work. So it's just like, Alex, why are you making this point? But like any good business, you do want returning customers. People that do kind of rush these processes, it's just, it's not a good business thing to do. Like, think about it. Do you want to make your customer happy and they would come back another five times? Or do you want to piss them off and they never come back? It's just as simple as that. Story 9. I've done it a fair bit. First time was near Vegas. She was an Asian P-star. Didn't recognize at the time, but I see her flower tattoo every now and then on the major subs. Refused to kiss. Felt very mechanical. It was the first time too, so I was in a ball of nerves. Way too expensive for the experience. Do not go to Vegas. Second time was in Reno. Bimbo blonde and a cowboy hat. She was much better. Legal Nevada brothels still make sex feel sterile and bureaucratic though. And the monopoly of legal brothels still made them way expensive. The third time I went mad and booked a three-day sex resort in the Dominican Republic. Had a choice of eight Ukrainian girls with the option to switch out every day. The first one was pretty meh. Having the whole day with them meant there was a whole lot of downtime when the language difficulties made conversation very difficult. The second time, I chose a really fit blonde girl with tiny boobs. She was bubbly and talked about her pets in Ukraine, that she had to pay big money to keep in a pet hotel while out in the Caribbean working, and how she's a vegetarian because her love of animals. That was a hell of a trip. Later, I found a network of Korean escorts in LA. So much better than any of the above. Story 10. I've had a variety of experiences ranging from the worst sex I've ever had to almost the best. You can have a pretty nice connection with someone pretty fast if you're both capable of that. The worst was a woman who came to my hotel room, spent the 15 minutes of chatting to complain that she was late to a party, suggested we get this over with, laid there and completely starfished to the point where I could hardly get an erection, and then left without talking. The best welcomed me at her door like we were two lovers who hadn't seen each other in months. We undressed each other, bathed each other, made love in several positions while keeping up a friendly banter, and I generally felt like I connected with a new close friend. Yes, I realized it was acting and part of the service. Essentially, we were lovers for an hour. It was neat. And yes, I've dated several women and been married. The marriage was so awful, she physically and emotionally abused me for a decade. I've decided I will never date again as a way to protect myself from ever slipping to that hell ever again. So, escorts. Oh man, I don't mean to get my opinion involved, but this kind of just sounds sad. Uh, this guy's ruining escorts, but it's also not real. I mean, they're putting on a performance, that's all it is. This guy is so scarred from the marriage, he'd rather want something unauthentic than actually try to work through towards something that is authentic. That's very disheartening, but I do understand this guy's pain. Story 11. All depends on the girl. I kind of like the new ones every time. My first was an Asian massage parlor. She was in her 40s, good looking, and I was nervous as hell. She kind of walked me through language, house prices versus tip. Would recommend for a first experience. Second time was also a woman in her 40s. Most of these girls are extremely busy and make you jump through hoops just to see them. You should be aware there's a lot of scammers and etiquette to how things are done. Don't contact anyone without a local area code. If they don't take cash, ask for donations on time, not sex. When you arrive, check the location for people before you knock. Place agreed upon donation on a table or whatever in plain sight without discussing it or what it's for. Most girls will be strung out on something. The second girl happened to be on ecstasy. Third girl was a car visit. She was nice but shy, mid-twenties, enjoyable because she made me feel comfortable and relaxed. I ended up visiting her a second time later, but she rushed really bad. And she was just so strung out. I just, I left feeling unsatisfied and angry. The fourth girl, I wish I could find her again, was 22. I paid $450 for two hours. I came in and paid. She counted the cash and clapped her hands excitedly and immediately started talking to me like I was her best friend. I was probably the most relaxed with her I've ever been with a girl, paid for or not. 
When we started doing it, I blew pretty fast, which is really uncommon for me, which is why I paid for two hours. We spent the remainder of the time talking and her giving me a back rub. Mostly we talked about family and whatnot. I think she took it to heart because it's been three years and I haven't seen her available on the site since. The next girl I saw was 29. I had bank issues and had to cut my time to an hour. She was cute, but had an injury. She complained a lot about being in pain, offered me part of my money back, and cut time short. Next girl was a 25-year-old goth girl. She really took care of me. Said I could pop as many times as I could in that time. It was cool with D-A-T-Y. Really nice girl. Squirrely though if you messed up contacting her. She just blocks you. Last one was a 32 year old redhead. She was a crackhead but super nice, bubbly, and energetic. She had a guy blowing up her phone when I arrived and tells me a story about how he was in his 50s and never came from a BJ before he met her and gives her $80 a week for a 5 minute. I kind of laugh and say, I've never came from one either. One thing leads to another, and the chick bets me the $300 donation I'd put on the table versus the remainder of my two-hour time that she could make me pop in three minutes giving me Ed. She lost, but damn it, I did enjoy. I ended up giving her an extra 100 over the three and doubled my time. $100 was an actual tip for a job well done. Mostly positive experiences, some not so good. I've learned from the experience mostly that even though the situation is effed up and these girls have some major issues, they're mostly good people. I'd even go as far as to say I'd date a few of them. The world is effed up. Sometimes people do effed up crap just to survive. 